Hey guys, this is John. I'm playing Wolverine in the five minute pool in ICC. Let's play E4. And, hmm, let's play a Smith Moore Gambit. Let's just see how the Wolverine treats this. Okay, and he plays this line. I think C4 is the move. Then we take the pawn. Not exactly sure why they play C4 uh, instead of taking the pawn, but <laughs> that might be neither here nor there. I know this line a little bit. Um, I believe White either puts the bishop on E3. Let's put it on E3. E3 or F4, don't quite recall. But it's a Meroxy position. I mean, it's it's playable for both sides. Sometimes black goes for a double fiend. I know that's how I would play this position for black. Like instead of A6, play B6. Of course, the way he's doing it is also fine. Uh, maybe B4, let's just gain some space. I know from watching Kristoff's videos and from playing this opponent uh, myself a couple times that this player usually plays pretty fast and they like to apply the pressure on the clock. So... Let's play queen d2, maybe bishop h6. Trading the dark square bishops would be beneficial. Um, let's take that. He takes the bishop, okay. So if I play knight d5, I'm threatening bishop b6, in fact. Looks annoying at the very least. Let's do that. Maybe bishop h6 to come. Um, mm, can he play e6? Bishop b6, I forgot that he could go to h4. I just didn't see that. Not that I forgot, I just straight up didn't see that. <laughs> but uh, e6, I can play knight b6 at least and grab the bishop pair if I want. Yeah, this is a irritating piece for him because I don't think he's uh, in a huge hurry to play e6. I mean, it's not a desirable move as far as his d6 pawn goes. I already have a half-open d-file, so I may be able to attack him later. Okay, rook c6, so that kind of asks for it as far as b5 goes. So b5, if we trade, he takes c1. I take with my rook, then I'm ready to play bishop b6 again. What's he doing there? Looks good to me. Let's do it. I think this is fine. So if e6 now, the same thing could happen. Bishop b6, he'll go to h4, uh, or maybe even a8. So he's just going to try to trade. Man, that move, again, bishop b6... Queen e8, he would have to play to guard e7. Do I really not have anything there? Maybe I just trade and then bring my rook into c7. That looks pretty good. Yeah, let's do that. So bishop b6. Win a tempo on the queen. Just force them to an undesirable square. There's also maybe bishop h6 I could have looked at there. I wish I had two bishops. One to go to b6 and one to go to h6. <laughs> that would be perfect. After queen e8, if I could play bishop h6, his rook would be trapped. It's not bug house though, so we can't do that. Um, also, is there anything with f4 coming? Probably not. It's strange that he's thinking right now. What is he thinking about? That makes me think that I'm missing something after queen e8. Like he seems hesitant to play that move, even though it seems so obvious. Um, I guess I can trade and then I probably have to play a4 before anything else. Oh, um, no, I don't think I'm missing anything. Knight c7. You can just move his queen somewhere. Although knight c7, maybe then I play a4. I mean, it is slightly awkward for him. Ah, maybe knight c7 followed by f4. That might be the solution. His bishop has no squares. Let's do that. Mm-hmm. That is interesting if I do end up trapping the piece here. Because um, I didn't see that, but the fact that he thought for so long before playing queen e8 was kind of a tell. It would almost like made me think, like, well, maybe there is something here. Yeah, now I think he's just losing this piece straight up. I don't see a way he can counterattack, and the bishop has no safe squares. d4, c3, b2, a1 are all guarded. So he's just losing a minor. Interesting. Yeah, not sure what I would have seen that if he um, had just played queen e8 quickly. I might have gone for the exchange on f6 or something else. Any way he can shake this up, doesn't look like it. Yeah, he just resigned. I think it's pretty much straight up piece. Yeah, plus four and a half. All right, so quick game. Let's go back and take a look at it. So tried the Smith Mora, but he declined it with d3. And like I said, c4 is a recommendation here. I'm not exactly sure why, because uh, I would assume bishop takes d3 off and just transposes. Like, it's uh, a good idea for white to get the pawn to c4 because you do want to play your knight to c3. 
the natural square. Also, it helps you to obtain control over the center, like that d5 square. Um, but I don't know, maybe someone can chime in, like why bishop takes d3 is never recommended or played. It might be played, I don't know, but I've just always seen c4. Maybe d5, but d5 doesn't seem like <laughs> a convincing move in view of that. And the d5 pawn will be double attacked. So I played c4 and he played g6, take. Um, if I play knight c3 too soon here, there is a chance he'll play bishop takes c3 and give me double isolated Check. pawns. That in itself would be interesting, but I'd prefer to avoid that option. So hence I played knight f3 first. He went d6, I played h3. A useful move, just stops bishop g4. He might not play bishop g4 right away, but I still think it's fine. And now that the knight is blocking his dark square bishop, I think it's fine to play knight c3. So he went knight c6, I played bishop e3. So as black, I kind of like the plan of playing b6, and then going bishop b7 and playing knight d7 later. The knight fits in nicely on that square. Whereas in the game, he played bishop d7, um, or a6 first and then bishop d7, but um, I, I would rather play this position than against that setup with the double fee and keto that I just mentioned. It's interesting because like uh, in a normal Meroxy bind with a white knight on d4, black often goes for this setup and then tries to take on d4 and then play the bishop to c6, but in this setup, it seems a little harder for him to exchange a pair of minor pieces, so black will remain more cramped in theory, and I'm not sure this bishop can be transferred anywhere. Um, where it will be immediately felt. So hence, I think it, it's probably better posted on the long diagonal. So I played a3, got ready for b4, and knight e8 seems suspicious. Uh, I'm not sure what black should do instead. Let's turn on the engine and see, but knight e8 just looks like a step in the wrong direction. Bishop e6, trying to go knight d7 perhaps. Yeah, I've got a nice position though, even if knight d5, threatening the bishop b6 move again. Yeah, I, I would much rather be white here. The space advantage counts for something. So he played knight e8. I played queen d2. I guess knight d5 immediately is playable. Probably better even. Because here, if e6, bishop b6 is just winning material. Uh, notice that the h4 square now is covered by my knight. Same with the g5 square. So his queen has no good flight squares. Knight c7 is the best move, which would just lose material. I can always take here and win the exchange. Um, so I should have played knight d5 one move sooner. I just instinctively played queen d2 to connect my rooks and bring my queen out. Um, and it was still good. Knight d5. Rook c6 seemed kind of odd, but um, mm, I don't know. e6 is not the greatest move either. Like I said, it weakens d6. And in addition to um, the possibility of bishop b6, there was this other move I mentioned, knight b6, just attacking both these points. Rook c7, c5. Yeah. And I'm bringing the heat. If he takes, I assume bishop takes c5, hitting the rook on f8. Could be trouble for black. He's not coordinated. He's cramped. So he played rook c6, and I decided to force the issue with b5. We got this trade, and he swapped the rooks. So now the, the bishop b6 threat is back on the table. Um, how can he defend? So if e6, and I play bishop b6, he can escape to h4, like I was saying. And then it seems like my knight would have to retreat, or I guess I could keep going with f4. I doubt I would see that counterattacking move, though. So I probably would have played knight b6 after e6, and maybe just uh, have been content with the fact that my knight is cramping him, and I can take his light square bishop whenever I want. And I would like to advance my uh, majority over here. So I'd be looking to play like a4, a5, a6 eventually. And I think it's going to take several moves for him to get his rook into the game. And White's significantly better even here. But yeah, as played, he played knight f6 and I went bishop here. And then, so check out his time. He has 349 when he started that move. And yeah, he's down to 312. So he took over 30 seconds to make this queen e8 move. Whereas I thought that move was just forced. Like I was just expecting him to play it right away. And remember at the beginning, I said this guy was a fast player from what I've seen. So, I mean, I'm not a big believer in luck in chess, but sometimes like situations like this happen where you can kind of read your opponent or pick up on uh, something that otherwise you might have missed. Because if he had played queen e8 right away, I think there's a good chance I would have like taken and not seen the knight c7 followed by f4 bishop trap idea. So, 
I guess that means after bishop b6, he has to do something else and just give up the pawn, but that looks pretty, pretty awful in itself. Like, say he plays queen a8, I Check. take e7, say king g7. Oh, I guess there's even the same problem. So he might be just lost after bishop b6, no matter what he does. That dark square bishop's doomed. So knight f6 was the real big blunder, the game ending blunder, but he already had a tough position. So. Yeah, I wouldn't play this this setup for black. I think it's inaccurate to do so. The combination of a6 and bishop d7 without a possibility of knight takes d4 is um, a little sketchy in my opinion. All right, hope you guys enjoyed this one. I'll be back tomorrow with another video. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye.